This right here is the 3D connection Space Mouse Wireless. It's a 3D mouse, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you what a 3D mouse is and whether I think it's something you need to have coming up. Hey, I'm Matt from mastersketchup.com, author of SketchUp to Layout and co-author of SketchUp and Layout for Architecture. So this is gonna kind of be like a review video. I own several of these products, but like in this video, I'm just gonna focus on the actual you know, 3D mouse feature that's common throughout all of these products. And just like as a full disclaimer, this isn't like a sponsored video. This is just like my opinion. I actually paid my own money for all of these products, except for this one. Uh, this one was actually a gift that was in the, um, the SketchUp Basecamp gift bag a few years back. So this isn't a sponsored video, however, if you are interested in purchasing a 3D mouse, you can support the channel by using my affiliate links below and I'll get a small commission if you do choose to purchase one. So what is a 3D mouse? Now, I think they have, they must have like some kind of patent on this thing because this is like the only company that makes this type of product. And basically it gives you, they call it six degrees of freedom. That's like their marketing term. But honestly, like it's not, marketing mumbo jumbo like that's literally what you get so you actually have the ability to move the camera directly along a multitude of different directions so you can pull the puck up and down to move the camera up and down you can twist the puck to rotate around that way you can also push the puck forward or back to actually dolly forward and back and you can go left and right you can let's see tilt forward tilt back the only thing that's disabled in sketchup because you can actually use this thing in a bunch of different programs the only thing that's not enabled is the tilt left and right and that's because in sketchup the tilt is actually locked out so even if you use the mouse so like you can't, like the blue is always going to be vertical. You can actually temporarily override that by holding down the control key and you can kind of screw up your model. But that's the only reason why you don't get that. Now, instead of sliding it across a surface like you would with a traditional mouse that provides two dimensional input, a 3D mouse is actually stationary on your desk and you provide input by pushing, pulling, twisting, and tilting the puck that's on top of the 3D mouse. Now the great thing about this is you can combine any number of these movements at the same time to create fluid movements that feel really intuitive and natural. Now, more specifically, a 3D mouse replaces or supplements the camera controls that your 2D mouse use to move the camera in 3D space. So, for instance, in SketchUp, you can activate the orbit tool by holding down the middle mouse button, and this will pivot the camera around a specific point in your model, typically somewhere in the center of your screen. And then you can also scroll the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And then you can also pan the camera by either holding down the shift key while using the middle mouse button or by holding the left mouse button with the middle mouse button. Now, ultimately, this is really a workaround solution to accommodate a two-dimensional input device in a 3D environment. Now, I think SketchUp does this really well. However, you can only do one of these things at a time. So you end up zigzagging around the model to reach the final perspective that you're trying to achieve. But with the space mouse, you can combine any of the six degrees of movement at any time to smoothly move the camera exactly where you want it to go. Now it's important to note that this doesn't replace your 2D mouse because it only provides control over the camera in your model. It doesn't actually control the mouse cursor itself. So you still need a regular mouse in order to activate tools and click on things and whatnot. So because of this, most people would set up their 3D mouse on the left side of their keyboard to be used with their left hand, assuming that you're using your right hand for your regular mouse. And now 
if you're a regular keyboard shortcut user like myself, you'll find that this is really the most challenging hurdle when using a 3D mouse because you're constantly moving your hand back and forth between the keyboard and the 3D mouse and it just interrupts flow and kind of forces you to take your eyes away from the screen more often than you want to. Now as far as build quality, this thing is really well made. It has a circular metal base that measures in at about three inches and on the bottom it has a rubber ring to keep it from slipping around on your desk and because it weighs almost a pound, this thing is really solid. I actually did some tests to see you know how well it would stick to a surface. I just placed it on a clipboard and started tilting the clipboard at an angle. I almost got this thing vertical before the mouse slipped off. Now, one thing you will notice that over time, you know, it might collect dust on the rubber and just a quick wipe down and you can get that rubber gripping really well very easily again. Now moving up from the metal base, there's a black plastic trim that shows the 3D Connection logo and also houses two buttons on one on each side of the 3D mouse. Now by default, these buttons will activate a radial menu, um, but they can actually be customized to specific commands, uh, keyboard strokes, and you can even create custom macros that these buttons will activate. There's also a nice blue LED light that lights up when the mouse is plugged in. Now you can turn this off in the settings if you don't like having that blue light showing. And then we get to the puck, which is actually very lightweight itself. Uh, it's very nimble. It has a rubber grip on the puck and the shape of it itself is concaved to make it easier to grip. And there's also four ridges that are located at the top, bottom, left, and right side of the puck. And those kind of help you orient the mouse. Um, because the mouse is circular, sometimes it's hard to uh, know which way it's oriented. And those ridges kind of give you some tactile feedback to help you instantly recognize which way you're facing with the mouse. Now the way I personally hold it is I place my palm on my desk next to the mouse and then I just simply use my thumb and finger on the puck at like a 4 o'clock and 10 o'clock position. It feels really comfortable and the concave shape combined with the rubber texture provides plenty of grip. I never feel like my hand is slipping off the mouse. and. Because of this hand position, I do find that the two buttons are kind of hard to reach naturally. So I'm not sure if it's intended maybe that you rotate the mouse a little bit so it's oriented where, you know, your thumb and finger are right there to press the buttons. But personally, I never really use those buttons. I'm not really a huge fan of radial menus and I haven't really found an urge to program the buttons to do something, you know, different. So how does the mouse feel? So when you manipulate the mouse in any direction, you kind of feel the springy resistance pushing back against you. It's very light, it's very subtle, but you'll also notice that the mouse will always spring back to its neutral position once you let go of it. So there's about a quarter inch, maybe a little bit less of travel distance along any direction. So the mouse is quite sensitive, but honestly it feels perfect in my opinion. I think they really nailed it. Now, because you have to pull upwards for one of the directions, the base of the mouse itself is quite heavy in order to prevent the entire mouse from lifting up off of the surface when you try to move upwards. Now, as far as compatibility, when you purchase the mouse, you have to install the 3D Connection drivers. They have custom compatibility with pretty much all of the major 3D modeling programs. But one thing that a lot of people don't realize is you can also get some basic functionality um, in most programs, even if they aren't officially supported. So for instance, if you open up uh, Bluebeam and then open the 3D connection properties, you can click on advanced and configure the controls to your preferences. And then that will allow you to navigate the PDF and zoom in all while just using the 3D Connection mouse to do so. Now they do vary in price. The wired version is the cheapest one. It starts at like $130 and then you can go all the way up to like $430 if you get like a bundle. And that's, I actually just purchased the Space Mouse Enterprise which included the CAD mouse as well. They actually make a pretty nice traditional mouse that's 
engineered specifically for 3D modeling. So that bundle is like $430. So there's a few different models in between. Now I've had at least one of these for probably a few years now. And honestly, the first time I tried it, I was like, I can't stand this thing. Like, I don't know, no matter which way I was turning the thing, it was doing the opposite. It's kind of like, it reminded me of like, so I'm a gamer. So way back when I was like playing GoldenEye on Nintendo 64, I got into the habit of inverting my joysticks. So it's like, anytime I sit down at a new game and like try to play and like, my joysticks aren't inverted and everything's doing the opposite of what I expect. That's how it felt for me when I used the space mouse for the first time. So if you have already tried it and you had that same experience, I want to tell you that you need to check out the settings in the space mouse or the 3d connection drivers. You can actually configure the space mouse to act differently for each program. And what you need to do is go into the advanced settings and play around with these navigation modes. Because when, for me personally, when I was on object mode, everything just didn't make sense to me. It, you know, the way it should feel is, is it should just feel completely intuitive. So I highly recommend if you have tried it before and it didn't feel right, Go ahead and play with these settings. I used helicopter mode quite a bit. So basically these, these different modes, so like object mode, it allows you to kind of feel like you're grabbing the actual object and moving it directly. Now to me, this doesn't really feel too natural, but basically what this means is like when I grab the puck and I pull up, that means the model is going to raise up. So, and then, you know, if you push down, the model's gonna go down. If I pull the puck towards me, the model's gonna go towards me. So that might be intuitive for you, but for me personally, I preferred a setting where I was actually manipulating the camera directly. So in helicopter mode, so when I push the puck forward, the camera moves forward. And so it's just like a helicopter, you know, you twist the, the puck around, then the camera twists around. And uh, so it's, you know, to me, that was very intuitive. Now, recently, I just actually switched over to target camera mode. And the reason I use this mode is because I find it rotates a lot quicker than helicopter mode. And it's, it's much more similar to how the SketchUp orbit speed works. So I really like that. If you haven't tried that, I do recommend it. So the big question is, would I recommend that you purchase a Space Mouse? And honestly, it depends because when I first decided to buy one, I thought I was just gonna be using it like all the time when I'm modeling. I thought I'd have my left hand on that 3D mouse, I'd have my right hand on my regular mouse, and I would just go to town. But that's not the case at all. I actually rarely use the space mouse while I'm modeling. And the big reason is because I need to have my left hand on those keyboard shortcuts and on the keyboard to like type in dimensions and stuff. So I just found it really awkward to have to like switch my hand back and forth constantly between the 3D mouse and the keyboard. So I did not use it as I thought I would. However, I absolutely love it. I mean, when I use it is when I, you know when you're like modeling and you reach a point where you know, you've been creating and modeling for a half hour and you just like take a moment to sit back. Like literally you're like, you, you know, you just sit back and you just want to, you know, look around the model and just kind of see what you're, you know, just, just visualize things and, and just think about your model. And for that, I love the 3D mouse. You know, I mean, your finger gets sore for crying out loud with the, you know, using the middle mouse button half the time. You know, it's nice to be able to kind of take a break from that and use a 3D mouse where like, the thing about it is your movements are so precise and you're directly manipulating the camera. You're not like using the middle mouse to 
orbit around and then you know you have to pan over and then you zoom in and out and you have to use a combination of things when you're using the traditional navigation tools whereas the 3d mouse it's just very smooth very easy and it's just you know it's a lot of fun to just be able to do that now where it really excels is when you're trying to navigate around in the model because you know a lot of times what i'll do is i'll increase the field of view so I can get some nice wide views of different rooms. And the thing that's great is like you can just fly right through walls into different rooms and and move around. Now, if I were to try to do this with, you know, the regular orbit tool, like if you jump into a wall, now you're, you know, sometimes you get stuck and, you know, the zoom slows down because you're like close to something. So it, it gets really hard to navigate using the traditional tools, whereas with the 3D mouse, it's just, it's so easy and it's really nice to have. So with the number one reason that I'm not using the space mouse 100% of the time, being that I'm not able to use my keyboard shortcuts, is literally the reason why I purchased the space mouse enterprise, because it has so many custom buttons that I can set up. So my idea is that I can use the space mouse to replace the keyboard for 90% of the shortcuts that I use. And I haven't gotten to the point where I'm completely fluent with that yet because it's gonna take just like a lot of hours to, you know, just be using SketchUp day in and day out for, you know, a few weeks straight to like memorize those custom keyboard shortcuts and I'm just not there yet. But if that is something that's holding you back, I would take a look at the Space Mouse Enterprise. They also have another product that's one step below this one, but it doesn't have the LCD screen. I don't personally own that one, but with something like this, I could see, you know, getting past that obstacle of not having, you know, the keyboard shortcuts right there. All right, so that's the 3D Connection Space Mouse. If you are interested in purchasing it, again, they have a wireless version, they have a wired version, and then they have a couple of versions that have extra buttons that you can assign to custom commands. If you wanna support the channel, you can use my affiliate links below. I appreciate that very, very much. And as always, thanks for watching, and make sure you subscribe and give this a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, uh, leave a comment below, and I'll see you on the next video.